decentralization media. Hi guys, welcome back to our tutorial series on Stella. And today we'll be looking into multi signature transactions. And as you can see, we'll do it through the Stella laboratory initially. Now let's go on to transaction builder. And I think right, right before that, let's have a look at the message that they've given us. Upgrade of Horizon Stella to RG, Cluster 2 Horizon version 1. Okay, this will take place on March 2nd. Mm, oh, so this will have breaking changes as well. So I think we'll need to change our code or update it in time. We can test it out using the beta server. Okay, there's something to look into. Uh, so let's continue with our tutorial. Uh, we head over to Transition Builder. Uh, okay, so now that I've uh, taken my previously used accounts, as you can see them, the two accounts, uh, let's just name it A. A for a and uh, B. Alice and Bob. That's how it goes there. Yeah? Alright. So let's say we are going to do a transaction that's going to take place between Alice and, Alice and Bob. <coughs> and Alice sends Bob uh, 5 lumens. And Bob in return is going to send Alice 10 lumens. Uh, this scenario happens when there are multiple different asset types. However, we will do this using the native asset itself. Let's have a look at it. So, why we require multi-signature can actually be explained because um, the source and destination of each operation will differ. So, we're going to have two payment operations where Alice is going to send Bob $5, I mean 5 lumens and uh, Bob is going to send Alice 10 lumens. So, both of them will have to sign on it for us to be able to submit this transaction. So, let's say Alice initiates this operation, I mean, this particular transaction. Okay, and uh, we can have a time bound or no, let's not have it. And we say we are going to do a payment operation. This is going to, okay, I'll go to Alice. Let's say it's sent to Bob, native asset, and Bob gets five loans. Source account again being Alice. And we need to create another operation, second payment operation. Uh, this will technically be Bob sending Alice. The destination will be Alice. Uh, same as the previous source and Bob is going to send Alice 10 lumens and the source account over here uh, it has to be specified because it's coming from Bob's direction so Bob is the source account holder and we're going to have to go to signing the transaction now let's try it out with only a single transaction uh, single signature from Alice Let's have a look at this in the XCR Weaver. Now, the XCR Weaver suggests that there is a single signature available. So, let's try and submit this particular XCR. However, the transition fails. And we get a message saying, transition failed. Mm, extra result calls are in the field. Okay. It says, first operation is success. Second operation has a bad authentication. Oh, there is no authorization. So the signature is not present there. So, in order to do this, so let's have a look at the transition again. And we don't have to get a new sequence because we haven't submitted the earlier one. And as we can see, for this particular operation, there is no signature present. 
so it needs Bob's signature in order to complete the transaction. So we will have to add Bob's uh, secret key, and Bob will have to sign it as well. So once Bob signs, we try to submit this transaction. We get a success. So we can have a look at the envelope XDR. And we see there are two signatures and initially Alice sent the five lumens, Bob sent the ten lumens. So the transition was performed. Now let's look at this using the Go SDK. Okay guys, welcome back to the tutorial. And let's have a look at how we can do a multi-signature transaction using the Go SDK. And today I won't be pasting snippets of code because it was kind of complex and I'll just uh, maybe run you through the code so if you have a look at the initial session you can see you can see that I have Alice's credentials so it's Alice's public and private secret key and also the key pair as a stellar key pair has been passed same thing has been done for Bob's account and the client is Horizon Testnet moving forward we are going to take a look at both the accounts details and so we have retrieved account details using the Horizon client for Alice and Bob as well and then we weaved later on the balances I've uh, logged it then we are choosing the asset type as native like we've chosen earlier we are not using any custom assets uh, there are two different types of assets That's, uh, four bit as well as 12 bit ones now Alice is sequence number now we are forced to get the sequence number here because um, when you're creating an operation that specifies the source account, you need to create a account interface in from the transition build. So, creating a simple account interface, uh, we have to give the sequence number. And the sequence number is in int 64, so the conversion has to be done from string to int because the sequence number we get in account details is a string field. Well, these are just simple specifics. You can look at look into it during development and have a reference to my code. So the initial operation is going to be five lumens from sender being Alice to receiver being Bob, and the asset is native. Then the second operation, however, is the sender is Bob and the receiver is uh, Alice. It's going to be ten lumens. Uh, the following code. Um, it will basically build the transaction and so here as well we've mentioned the source account unlike the previous transaction we have done before and we've aggregated the operations then following by the network phrase as testnet then we have an infinite time bound so it can be submitted whenever it when the user signs No, Alice initially signs the transaction, serializes it, converts it to base64 and sends it over to Bob. So Bob receives this XDR in base64 format. He then converts it into a transaction and he has to assign the network passphrase saying it is a testnet and then he basically signs it using his key pair. Now after he signs it, he converts it into base64 again before submitting to Stella. Now once he submits the transaction, he cons I console log the hash of the transaction. Then again we retrieve the account details and we have the account balance. Alright, so let's have a look at how the code executes and hopefully runs
so as you can see the initial balance is listed out for us from each account and finally we see um, Alice gave Bob 5 and Bob sent Alice 10 was it so that's it for tutorial guys hope you guys enjoyed it please leave a like subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and list your comments down in the comment section thank you decentralization media